right. It's time for your headliner, Ryan. Hey, Far Cry 5. We got to see uh we got to see some video. We got to see some pictures. Mm-hmm. We got to see some vignettes. And um and there's some things to talk about. So if you don't know, Far Cry 5 is going to be here in the good old US of A. It's going to be in Hope County, Montana, which Hope County, I'm pretty sure, is a uh, fictional mm-hmm. place in Montana. But um, Hope County is home to this religious cult of doomsday preppers who basically believe that the country is in collapse, that the world is on the verge of chaos, and that they have all the answers. And they can they can lead the people of Hope County uh whether willingly or forcefully uh, to join them on whatever their end goal is, which we don't know that is yet. Um, so we got to see a little bit of um, uh, just some cinematic stuff. Uh, they did some, like, you're going to have, like, just like any Far Cry game, there's some people scattered throughout Hope County that are going to help you or participate in uh, your mission to take down this religious cult. Um, we saw some airplanes, some uh, like, basically yeah. like crop duster on World War II plane. Like dog fighting, though. Dog fighting, yeah. which is crazy, uh, which is going to be cool. We saw some bears, some big old bears, which, yeah, sure. Some fishing. Fishing? Yeah. <laughs> some good fishing. Um, yeah, so it... it, it <laughs> It comes at such an interesting... So this game is not supposed to come out till early 2018, mm-hmm. um, which is going to be so interesting to put Far Cry 5 up against Red Dead Redemption 2. Although we don't know when RDR 2 is actually going to come out. It's definitely not coming out until after April, which April is when Take-Two Interactive's I, second I, or third quarter starts. And I can I can separate the two. Like, I go... I, there's more... Yeah, of, there is I'll definitely play, more I'll of an action... Both. There's an action fix with Far Cry that... Yeah, but but I think the big thing for me with Far Cry 5 is that I want to see them, I want to see them do something different this time. I want them, I don't, if this is just, hey, there's random radio towers that Mm -hmm. you're going to climb and, you know, there's these sections and you're going to clear out camps and like, if it's, if it's it's, an an Ubi open world. (laughs) Yes. If it is just like a by the numbers Ubi open world and it just happens to be in this, what looks like it should be a pretty setting. Like it it looks like the setting will be nice. Um, I think that will be a real disappointment. Um, so I got two thoughts on the setting. Uh, okay. One, I think it's really, as far as the location and the opportunities there. I think it's really, I think it's really interesting. And especially when you look at Montana in general about like, I heard a lot of conversation on podcasts since this announcement, just about like how realistic could this be? Like, could there really be this big section that is, you know, you know, really just shut off from society to the mm-hmm. point that it feels like a far cry Island. And, you know, most people were kind of like, yeah, yeah, like if you, you could draw certain, certain lines that, yeah, that in th- it theoretically could, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, that's, that's kind of cool that they found a way to do that in the, in the United States. And, um, I'm actually really excited for, you know, Ubisoft's developers are not, uh, most, their most of their development companies in this one, I think this is Montreal, uh, mm-hmm. working on this yes. game, but you know, Ubisoft's teams from all over the world tend to work on all their games. Um, and just their perspective of the United States in in this very interesting time for the United States is very. I'm, I'm I I want to know how this story comes across because uh, at this uh, that I think that's what has to be elevated in Ubisoft games going forward. You can't just throw in a story for story's sake or half-ass it anymore. Even even in a Far Cry game, and will it you know will it say anything interesting or worthwhile or be be worth playing because um, if you're just going to make the sandbox game and just check the boxes off, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I've got, I've got more better games to play at this point. Um, But I don't want to shoot down Ubisoft out of the gate here because I I do feel like they deserve some credit for getting us to this point. But now it's, I just don't know. 
if Far Cry 5 is happening too soon for them to react to other um, evolutions in the genre. I don't know. Mm. I, it's, it's just like, you know, even, even I know you had a ton of fun with Watch Dogs 2, and it does sound like the, the best of that type of game. Um, mm-hmm. Just more of that. I don't. I don't know if that's that's enough. And uh, so I'm concerned about it. But also, like Ubisoft's gonna. I, I'm. I'm confident. Well, it actually comes from two two points. I want them to to innovate, continue to innovate because they've gotten us here and they're capable of it. But also, I need. They need to do that soon. I guess uh, so to like keep Vivendi away. Like I want them to be successful. I don't yeah. want. I don't want this to crash and burn and then and then open the door for that either. Because I think. I really want to see how Ubisoft can react to the the games we've been playing in 2017, and to see if they can't uh, improve the genre. So, it's uh, there's a lot riding on Far Cry Five in that regard. Yeah, um, I think that so so everybody is kind of uh, excited that Ubisoft is taking on what people are billing as a, a divisive game that the the subject matter might be divisive for some people who play it. And I think that doing so, whether they thought they were doing that or not, but but having the narrative build up that way, that if they do the, if they either go with the just straight sandbox, silly, this story makes no sense, I don't even know why I'm, I'm here, but I really like doing this stuff, which is how I felt about Far Cry 3, which mm-hmm. is a game I love, but... Mm-hmm. I was able to forgive it a lot for the things that it did very poorly because right. it did some things really well. Um, I think this is this that will bite them harder if they do it with something like mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. Sure. Um, because so so far people are reacting to the fact that you so you play uh, you're a brand new uh, deputy on the police force for Hope Count. Like right as everything is basically falling apart and this this cult is seizing Hope County, like they're basically taking control. Um, they've kind of just been putting their their tentacles into everything and now they finally have sprung their their master plan of taking control of it and making it their own. Um so so for the I think the first time in Far Cry, uh, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think for the first time you're gonna actually create your character yep. instead of just being a character. Yep. Um, which is good. Uh, but you're going to be an American who's killing other Americans. And like, that's, um, it, that's such a, it's such a weird line for video games where like we watch movies where that happens all the time. We watch TV shows where that happens all the time, but often in video games, we're always pitted up against either, uh, you know, fanciful things or it's, uh, ghost recon and we're, killing bolivians because who crap cares about bolivians except for people in bolivia or um we're killing people on this random island or um you know it's like an absolute evil yeah yeah but this is this is much more nuanced because uh you know you could have people who are in hope county who maybe they just got suckered into this religious cult and you know as far as they know you know, these guys are, these guys are on the level and they're trying to protect them and you might have to kill them. And And I think, uh, I think our fears come from the fact that Ubisoft doesn't traditionally do nuance very well. Like it's almost like you look at watchdogs and what was the real message of those games? They just always shied away from actually making a statement kind of thing. Well, and that's the thing is that like watchdogs two is silly and, it works because it's silly yeah. because if you stop to think about it, you're basically one of the worst terrorists <laughs> in the world. Like if you think about what you're doing, like you're just dropping bombs all over San Francisco. Like you are a terror. Like you would be number one on terrorists. Like we got to bring this guy down the FBI watch list. So, uh, so they could get away with that because it was silly. This, if, if it's at all serious, like they're going to have to kind of deal with that. Because if they don't, it's gonna feel just like cold and and like disconnected from reality, and like that there's no like that at no point would you think about the things that you're doing to all these people, and like whether these people are are truly uh, evil or not. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's 
interesting ground. Uh, and yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little worried that Ubi doesn't know what they're doing. I mean, because you also don't want this to be silly. Like, it's, no, it's, not at all. Yeah. So the other thing is that this is a religious cult, and so anytime that you throw religion, people are going to have uh feelings Mm -hmm. and so it was funny aaron and i were talking about this uh aaron was supposed to be on the show tonight but he (laughs) bailed on us um but (laughs) we were talking about this in slack uh and um you know there's already been some people who are just like oh well that's not how all uh religious people are uh you know we're not we're not all like that and it's just it they're they're gonna have to deal with that just extremely tired narrative. Of. Not all people are this way, um, which which doesn't mean anything. I mean, first of all, this is fiction, so let's just it it doesn't matter. Uh, but also, this is entirely possible. Like it, it's not that far from reality. It's not that far where people based on fear make some irrational decisions and do some stuff that's really bad. And, uh, you know, that, that leads to this chaos that you're going to be in. Um, so I think people are jumping to conclusions about that way too soon. Uh, uh, but that's another thing that I'm just, it's like, it's just another thing that Ubisoft is taking on all at the same time. And it's just like, I hope you guys have really good writers and I really hope that they know what they're doing because man, like, I don't know. No, they'll just There's... put up that Assassin's Creed disclaimer that it's been it's made it's a game made by people of mul- multiple countries from multiple cultures of multiple faiths, and you know we're not trying to actually say anything. That was the old Assassin's Creed disclaimer. Um, yeah. Um, the the other interesting thing to think about though is like it feels very on the nose in 2017, but we know how game development works. This means this game was concepted over three years ago oh yeah for so sure. uh to think that it's going to actually lean into current current events i think is a little bit far-fetched i think i'm trying to think of when when was that oregon militia stuff was that 2016 or 2015 um yeah it, yeah sometime it, around then but otherwise it's they just, were there for a long time and they said that was one of the things that inspired them yeah so i think it'll yeah i I have a feeling they'll they'll somehow write out the religious stuff. I think I've seen shows and I won't mention them by name that start off this way and then they diverge where basically the bad guys used religion to just pull people in but they're not actually speaking for it. Like they're not actually religious. It was just a trap for to yeah. get to get people involved in their thing and they're actually screwing them over too and makes them more evil and all that stuff. So um, there's a lot of ways that can go, but I mean, I guess my initial reaction to this was like, wow, that's probably the bravest Ubisoft has been as far as like trying to tackle an issue head on. We'll see if they follow through on it. If their track record says they do not. Um, but, but also I don't want them to, you know, you mentioned Bolivia, you mentioned Wildlands. I don't, they, I don't want them to treat it that way either. Like we joked mm-hmm. about like one of those. One of those movies, video game movies we talked about recently, that was like, oh, it's written by uh, you know one of the guy writers from Wildlands. The the, the writing in Wildlands is awful and not, insulting. Not and, good. Yeah, so not good at all. <sighs> the fact that they had to patch that game so that you could turn the in-game voice down so that you didn't have to hear all of the horrible things that those people were saying all the time is just like that's how tone deaf that game was. Uh but hey. On the brighter side, mm-hmm. Far Cry 5, the entire game you can play as co-op. I'm excited about that. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. I, I love... I. That's like... If there's one thing that I could say I truly love doing in gaming, it is playing through mm-hmm. a campaign-style mission with a bud. And maybe, like, that'll, that's and maybe that'll give me that Wildlands, that the itch I was looking to, looking to from Wildlands. I want... Uh, I don't... You know, I've got Destiny 2 on one end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. I've got, like, even bigger MMOs on another, but look... And then, uh, but I, I do, I want like, you know, a two to four, four person, like just like focused story driven experience that we can also just like figure out different ways to tackle this base. Like I like that mm-hmm. stuff and yep. like, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Cause yeah, you put all this other stuff aside, like when Far Cry, Far Cry games are moving, when the action's going, it's a lot of fun and it's yes, a lot of fun. Build on that, evolve that, 
could be uh there could be a lot of good things here. Yeah. 